between him and I is, well, they were still wearing armour, but they have long sleeve tunics, they have long trousers, they have clothes, enclosed boots. The helmets have become a little bit more simple than the ones that we've been wearing, because ours are hit beaten out of one sheet of iron. As I've gone back to a round shield, the Romans, uh, 400 BC, were wearing round, had round shields, then they went to these more oval type shape, and then they've then to the sort of ones we're using, so, uh, so that's the oval one. Oh, and eventually, <laughs> they, go back, they go back to round ones. But there's a lot more missiles being thrown around on the battlefield now, so we've got throwing axe, which is influenced from a tribe called the Franks, known as a Frankiska. And on the back of his shield, we've actually got five of these. So now, as an infantryman and foot soldier, he now has lots of things he could throw at the enemy. So this is this is known as a is called a plumbata. That is plumbum. Plumbum is the Latin word, Roman language for lead. That's what it knows. So a plumber used to work with lead. That's how you seal pipes with his head to the plumber. But plumbum, the idea of lead weight there, the idea of this, you what we either throw it overarm or underarm to launch up into the sky. It goes up to the height and then the lead acts on it and brings it back down to earth like that. So you've got two choices now. You can keep the shield in front of you like this because there are now archers shooting at you, or do you put it up above your head to protect against a rain of these? Because not every guy may have a helmet now. So you've got a problem. What are you going to do? Protect your head. Protect your head. You lift the shield up some shoot you. Point. Right then, my friend. Shall we rescue you? It's quite heavy for us, isn't it? That's quite heavy. Oh, well done. Well done, my friend. Oh, well done. You've done this before, haven't you? Take a hat off. Yeah, so the idea really um, within here is just bits and pieces that we've had we've either made or we've collected over the time, which just demonstrates that although we are. Uh, the groups here are typically representing soldiers, as most TV and film will have us depicted. Um, it's only a short period of time, really, uh, but because if you go back to 400 years BC, the Roman army was following the Greek model. So, and bearing in mind that everyone has to buy their kit, so you have to buy your equipment, your arms and armour. So if you're rich enough, you have the latest in Greek style, which is the hoplite, with the round shield of sphere, and the sword is... Well, in Greek world, it's a kind of se it's a secondary weapon. It's not really the one you usually use. But the Romans then translate that. They they have a bit of a fight with a bunch of uh, uh, Iron Age tribes people who've invaded um, northern Italy, and the, the the levy, the legion sets off. And not everyone is dressed like this. There are guys like you might, you might be at the back because you've got nothing because you can't afford to have any armor or anything. So you're at the back. Right. As you get closer to the front lines, the more stuff you have. So the guys at the front are then are all in this thing, and they're fighting like in the Greek style with spears forward, moving forward in blocks, and the enemy just sort of surrounded them, swarmed over them, and destroyed them. At which point the Roman army went, "Oops, perhaps we better think, rethink this," and they started adopting a lot of the equipment of of their enemies. So, for example, mail shirts, mail shirt like that. I would say put this on, but it's, can you see how rusty this is? <laughs> You're going to get really filthy wearing that. <laughs> but that's, a, that's just an example of a male shirt. Yeah. Hold your arms out, straight out like that. Ready? No. So don't. Bear in mind that's your size, not my size. Oh, that is me. Yeah. I know. Now ask one of my mates who's wearing a big shirt, shirt like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. A full-size shirt of male like this can weigh anything up to 15 kilograms, which is what 30 pounds thereabouts. Um, whereas this arm is only about 10. How much weight? The spear, not very much. Um, spears. There's a difference actually between spears and javelins. What you saw us carrying out there were javelins. Yeah. They're designed to be thrown. But you can use them as, as, as a stabbing weapon, but it's mostly intended to throw. A spear, on the other hand, you keep in your hand and you fight with it. And it can't be too heavy, because otherwise you wouldn't carry it. You wouldn't be able to lift it. These ones are little javelins. When we changed our army tactics, we went from the Greek style to a more open and fluid style of fighting. We ended up fighting with a group of younger men, we call them wellites. They are lightly armed skirmishers, so they've got maybe a round shield, lots and lots of little javelins. Um, mind that bit though. That's that bit. This bit is a, what I like to call a sharp pointy end. 
Okay. Well, you, there's, there's an important rule about sharp pointing is you never stick that bit in yourself. All right, because what will happen is you'll start crying and we'll just laugh at you. Right. It's always better to put that bit in the other bloke. But that's designed to be thrown. So you imagine you've got loads, loads of these javelins. You might have a sword, you might not. You've got a shield, a big round, a round shield like this. You might have armour, but if you do, it might be something as simple as that. That is just a back and breastplate. It's upside down. So it's simple back and breastplate, they just protect your chest. We call it a pectoral. A pectoral right, so simple thing like that, maybe nothing, nothing more. Um, and your job is now to go out there and throw lots of them at these people. To, How many of those would they Five, maybe five or so, I don't really know. I mean, as many as you can get. I mean, you can carry them in your hand as a kind of shield. You can understand. Yeah. Then later on, there are uh, depictions of guys carrying a uh, set of lances in, in a what well, best description, a golf bag. Right. You imagine a tube with lots of jabbers in, slung across your back, and you can carry some water. But our evidence is, is, is largely based on what we can find from archaeology uh, and the writers, ancient writers, who unfortunately um, don't always tell us everything that we want to know because for them it's a bit like saying, right, I could just say the word car and all of you would go, yeah, I know what that is. 3,000 years in the future, when a car is an ancient idea and no one's seen one for 3,000 years, what does it look like? <laughs> um, that's the problem. So, so often they don't explain things. Don't they? It's, uh, so, for example, uh, you'll notice in the typical Hollywood version, all Roman soldiers wear red tunics. So we decide to be awkward and wear blue, <laughs> simply because they, they, we, have no, we have no real definitive evidence for colours. Is it? Pop it on the floor, then. All right. <laughs> So th that's the th problem. So you've got no. If chances are, if, if you're equipping a, a large organisation, then by the time you've got your first century AD invasion, um, a legion can be up to 5,000 soldiers. Now, if you've got to include 5,000 soldiers, it's not just one set, is it? Because you're going to have to have replacements because you know, these are going to wear out. Are you going to go to all the extra expense of having died? Or are you going to use cheap dyes, which are going to fade, or are you just going to bother and it will be undyed rules? So you could, be, you could actually be all completely wrong. You'd be better off wearing sort of, sort of um, dirty cream colours or browns. You know, so you use Likewise, we're all fairly shiny because we all spend hours polishing stuff. Whereas, think about it. I mean, I know for a fact the other day I cleaned under here. I don't know if it still shows. Is it still rusty under there? Yeah. yeah. That's because obviously perspiration yeah. it's corroded. Yeah. It's surface rust in there. You go a lovely chocolate brown colour. You know? And I, well, I sometimes wonder whether that's maybe. Yeah. As long as it still works, yeah. it's functional. Yeah. Does it doesn't really matter. But I mean, if you're on parade, yes, definitely. But what we do know is they do tend to silver things. They like to cut plate things. So um, my shiny helmet has been covered, has been silvered. Oh, it's because I've got money, because I've come into some money, I found a few Britons who had money in their pouches and borrowed it. So now you can get things like this. This is the same sort of belt, but this time plate fittings have been silvered. That is that, that we do find from our gold fittings. Lots of these gold fittings are silver, even perhaps gold, lots of gold used as well. So um, you start to get a bit shiny. You're kind of um, wearing your wealth around your body. Yeah, I was going to say, is it like a status thing? Yeah, as much as a status. Hello. Is it me or is there an earthquake? Yeah. 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 There are the papers, man. Oh. This is you. Let's do it that way then. Right. There you go. <laughs> yeah? As long as you promise not to hit anybody, will you? So, swords again. Swords, hello. Um, they change as well. Um, from a simple leaf blade, we get uh, a thing called like this, which is. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, in Greek, uh, the Greeks had a version which they called a kopis, uh, which is slightly more curved than this. It sort of bends it this way. Uh, so this bit of bend. Yeah. This one is more like a, 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 a weapon that. Oh, you need to chop your foot off then! <laughs> yeah. Dude, careful! 
Okay, so this is a, a version that's either referred to as a macaira in Greek or falcata in Spanish. But, it's, but basically, yeah, are you can do it. Yeah, that's what we oh, see. Like, cool. I can't miss it, I can't miss no, it. No, I'm not going to miss it. Put you through your paces. Yeah,